let's talk to BMAC about uh, Kuzi first. So Kuzi gets suspended by the International Federation for four years. But the NHL can't touch him on this, can they? You can't? What's up? Oh, what's up, guys? Hello, uh, BMAC. It's been a while. It's been a while. Oh, but by, by the way, before we get started, just Jason, just want to know it, you're you've been in our thoughts, man, all week. I, I just want to let you. know. I went through this with my dad a couple of years ago, so um, pretty much the exact same situation as as uh, as your mom. And he was a Secret Service agent for twenty years. They probably crossed paths. Oh, in the they White probably House. did. Yeah, yeah, uh, millions of times. So no, just, I mean it's the worst. It's know. the worst thing in life. To lose, Dude, to it, lose a parent, yeah, it's just awful. But it's awful, you. but just, I just just want to, yeah, start that off. Let you know you're we're, we're thinking of you, man, and uh, we all been through it, and you got a good support system, so that's great. And uh, now let's, yeah, let's let's talk some cocaine. By the way, the koozie <laughs> thing. Lighten this up. So yeah. if if koozie was caught, let's say he, he was caught with a bunch of coke, you're telling me the NHL couldn't suspend him for that? Are you breaking the law? Uh, probably a. A different scenario. Yeah, if he's, if he's like caught with it, yeah. and I, I don't know the specifics of the CBA with that, but yeah, I mean, if he's drug trafficking, that's that. That I think uh, Gary Bettman has much more leeway than uh, you know to, to to do something. Than, but it was in his system, just, right? It was in his. I mean, he'd failed a drug test, but not an NHL he, test. Well, yeah. the and the NHL, if, if the I mean, they're very they're just very lenient guys. The, the way the NHL, it, it's the opposite of the NFL system. So they call it a drug of abuse in the CBA, which means marijuana, cocaine. Um, they try to steer these guys into treatment. They, right. they really don't want to go towards suspension. Now, the one hiccup here, and Kuznetsov is going to have to um, talk to Gary Bettman, and I think in part that is because the NHL did, after the kind of infamous video came out, um, in late May after the world championships of him in a hotel room in Vegas, which is the most obvious thing ever, like rolled up dollar bills, white powdery substance, all that stuff. The caps in, in the NHL did their kind of own investigation and, and cleared him. You know, he, he basically did the, I was there 10 minutes and rolled out. What wasn't me. When you, if you're going to lie to the NHL directly, I think that's where, Gary Batman may have some leeway, and that's why their written statement left open a little bit the possibility of, um, you know, of, of some kind of punishment. So I, I guess you can't totally rule it out, but in general, the NHL is going to let, um, you know, let, let, let it this. Go. Yeah, I mean. It, it, what about the cat? By the way, Ryan, by the way, it makes all the sense in the world that he was doing it because he was so up and down all, all exactly. year. You know exactly. What I mean? It explains the up and down performance. That's exactly what I said. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So exactly. I, to me, guys, I got and I got kind of blowback on Twitter because the the dummies on Twitter are just like everybody in the NHL is doing coke. His teammates don't care. Like, get that's, bent, dude. There's no way that's true. Like, even if we admit, and I, the NHL does admit, like cocaine use is on the rise among players. In part, that's why they test the way they do, so they can have some sense of. You know, if if players use which ones they're using, it, it, you know, again, it's about treatment. It's not about punishment. But at the same time, if you're Tom Wilson or Alex Ovechkin and you're going, you know, man, we, we, we can't win a cup without Evgeny Kuznetsov playing at a close to the level he played at in the playoffs in 2018, you know he can play that way. And instead you get an erratic up-and-down season – uh, my whole point was just there are going to be questions from his teammates. Now, that doesn't mean they're, they're you know, going to pull him aside and be like, hey, you know, what are you doing, man? Like, what's going on? But something – there's no way that's just going to completely be allowed to slide. I mean, they, they need him, and they can't have the up-and-down play he too often gave them last season. Brian, do we know for whatever, for whatever reason. Do we know any of the details about his treatment at this point? Like, what's the timeline? And that our training camp. I mean, we're like 35 days away from the opening game. I mean, it's basically yeah, right around yeah. the corner. I mean, this this definitely needs to be said. Like, he European players generally don't show up to the kind of informal, you know, on ice workouts in Arlington at their headquarters right. until you know usually this week or next week, even um, once school starts and the kids have to all that stuff. 
because that's has been here for a couple weeks. Very rare for, especially for one of the Russian players. I think Ovechkin is still uh, is still back home. Um, as far as I know, I think Dmitry Orlov is still back home. So he has done all the right things. He's agreed to like extra testing. He's agreed to take advantage of the treatment plan offered by the NHLPA. I don't have specifics on that, but there's you know education stuff and and. I think counseling probably, um, you know, because we don't know. The one thing I'll say, too, we don't know if there's, like, an actual, is this recreational use? Is it an actual substance abuse issue, which it, it's possible it could be. Um, and, again, that's where the treatment part comes in. So he's agreed to do all of those things. He showed up early. You know, I, I assume you'll see a pretty, you know, just based on the statement that was put out, you'll, you'll see a pretty contrite, uh, Evgeny Kuznetsov, and, and, you know, there will be no person on the team, even going into it, even before this, he was going to be watched very closely because they needed him to have a better year. Um, now that that even doubles because they ha- not only have to have, have a better year, but he's got to uh, got to prove that, you know, this this is behind him and uh, and he's all in for, for this season as they try to get the cup back. Listen, I understand the NHL and the collective bargaining agreement, but can't Ted just step in and say, okay, look, the, the NHL can have their own uh, deal, but I'm not playing this guy. I'm not playing him for 10 games, 20 games. He's going to go, he's going to continue to get treatment. And when I think he's ready, he'll come back. So maybe they still pays him, you know, whatever. But can't Ted just kind of step in here, and, at least it from a – from an image standpoint, he's got to he's got to have something beyond just, in my opinion, just going to rehab. If if another instance went down, then yeah, then all options are on the table. Um, because he doesn't have a history of this, no. As far as I know, you know, the NHL would know, and mm-hmm. I don't know if they would necessarily put it out because remember they, with these drugs of abuse, they're not like. They're not necessarily marking it down. They're using it more as like notes, like, "Oh, okay, that what that dude is one of thirty that test, tested positive for coke." So, I think it would take another incident for the caps to go down that road. And I don't wow. even know what the CBA would allow them to do. I guess if you're paying the guy, you could pay paying him. You could do whatever. I would your, think. Yeah, if you're paying him, you could probably do whatever. But honestly, I would think it would take like more or like really erratic play again, him just not living up to his top and right. probably another failed test so far. All signs point to him doing the right thing, but you know, he'll be closely watched for sure. We'll see. 